Beloved in Christ, we'd like to thank you once again for joining us in our study of God's holy and divine word here at Understanding the Father's Heart Ministries. Uh, we are truly blessed to be with you. And by the way, my name is Evangelist and Teacher Joseph A. Brown. Just in case if this is your first time uh, tuning in uh, to uh, this program. I want to thank the staff also at Acadiana Open Channel who make this uh, program possible in, uh, in their uh, uh, ministry of sharing um, uh, the Word of God. So we ask that you continue to pray for the staff here at uh, Acadiana Open Channel. And beloved, I want you to know that the Lord God cares about you. But we as believers, uh, our number one desire should be the advancement of the kingdom of God or the knowledge of the kingdom of God. That is to return and be set in on this earth one day. Beloved, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, is going to return. Uh, but the Word of God tells us and teaches us that, and Jesus even spoke of that, and that's what we'll be talking about, that an evil generation seek it after a sign. Many people have gone uh, awry from the Word of God because they have sought signs rather than seeking the Lord. The Lord never told us to seek signs. Amen? But to seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things shall be added unto us. But if you look out today at the world and especially what we call Christendom, many people are putting out fleeces to see as um, uh, uh, who was it who put out a fleece? I'm trying to remember right now. Uh, but you know the story. He put out a fleece in order to test God to see if God was really with him. Well, beloved, I want you to know today, we don't need to set out anything to determine if God is with us. Uh, the Word of God says he lived on the inside of us, we who are born again. So we don't need to set out a fleece to determine is God real or not. How, why would I need a fleece when he lives on the inside of me? Identifying, glory be to God. Amen. The word of God tells us that the Holy Spirit teaches us all things. Beloved, we have to put our trust in the Holy Spirit of God that now liveth and dwell on the inside of us. We need not seek after a signs or the signs of that God said will take place. We know as believers that um, certain things will take place just like the seasons of the year. We know when fall comes along that the leaves will begin to fall. Uh, fall from the trees. We know when spring comes in, then the buds will come forth and then the uh, the flowers will come forth. We know in the summertime there is very much heat that will fall upon us. And when winter is here, it is very cold. We are aware of these things, beloved. We don't need to have to seek for them. What we need to do what is prepare for them. Amen that we'll be able to be um, uh, comfortable, say for instance, as, a, as uh, just a human being. We know that we need to wear coats in winters, in the winter time. We can wear short sleeves in the summertime. So we kind of prepare for the coming of the season. Amen? Because uh, Jesus also said there will be signs in the earth, there will be signs in heavens. In the heavens. And he says, when these things take place, he didn't tell us to go after them. He said, rather, 
Rejoice, for your redemption is drawing nigh. Even the apostles who did much of the writing, they were constantly in a ready state as though the Lord himself could have burst through the heavens even as they live it. Even as they were living, they were believing that the Lord Jesus Christ would come before they died. Beloved, there is nothing that needs to be done to precipitate the coming of the Lord. It has already been done. Beloved, we are called to be rejoicing. We are called to be glorifying and magnifying the Lord, not seeking after signs. And there will be many in these latter days that will fall away from the faith because they are seeking after signs and wonders. Amen. And beloved, that will be a very sad case one day when they find out that there was no need to seek after the signs because the Lord lived on the inside of them. Beloved, let us go before the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you, we praise you, Lord God. We ask that you anoint your word, that you bless your word, Father God, that you bring understanding to your word above anything else, Father. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. And beloved, I would like you to turn your Bibles to the 11th chapter of the book of Luke. And what we want to talk about is an evil generation seeketh after signs. An evil generation will seek after signs. So, beloved, you and I will have to be very cautious as we walk in this earth in these latter days. We are living in very trying times, in times where the truth is what you can get somebody to believe, even though it may be a lie. So in other words, a lie can become the truth. If you say it long enough and you are very persuasive in what you are saying, and then you add to that signs and wonders, then, beloved, above all, you can get someone to follow you regardless if you are an uh, emissary of Satan himself. People will follow you. It doesn't matter. They will follow you just like those poor souls followed Jim Jones in the uh, jungles of Guyana. They did it, Ghana. They did it. Why? Because they believed a lie. And beloved, you have to do your very best to put yourself in a place where you don't start walking after lies and believing that somehow it is the truth. I told you to turn to the eleven, um, the twenty, <clears throat> the twenty-ninth verse. Uh, the word of God reads this this way. And when the people were gathered thick together, he began to say, "This is Jesus speaking. This is an evil generation, for they seek a sign." And there shall no sign be given it but the sign of Jonas of the prophet. For as Jonas was a sign unto the Ninevites, so shall also the Son of Man be to this generation. Jesus was establishing the fact that he himself would be a sign to the generation that he uh, came into. He himself would be a sign. And he wanted 
those who were around him to get a fuller understanding of that. That it would not be because of old relics or because of holy places or apparitions that would bring revelation to what Jesus Christ would do. He would be a sign to the generation itself. And that generation would always be known as a generation that Jesus Christ came into. But Jesus described that generation as being evil. Because they were seeking after a sign, and there was a sign right there before them. The miracles that he was doing, uh, the, 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 um, the ability to uh, operate in the spirit of the living God, and then the teachings that he was sharing with the people. That was enough to let them know the sign of that generation, just as Jonah was a sign unto the people of Nineveh. Now, Jonah went there in faith to do the work of God, but at the same time, Jonah had a dislike or a disdain for the Ninevites. And he knew that if he preached the word and if he shared the word, that those people would then begin to repent and turn from their wicked ways, and then God would save and spare them. And this is not what was in Jonah's heart. Jonah wanted these people not necessarily destroyed, but taught a lesson. You know, it's just like us. You know, someone does something evil against us or, uh, or maybe say something evil against us. You know, we, many times we don't want to pray, Lord, bless them, do good for them. We want to pray, Lord, teach them a lesson that they don't mess with a child of God anymore. That's where we go many of times, but God is not that way. Glory be to God. God is simply trying to draw you into the kingdom of God. And if he can draw you into the kingdom of God without dest literally destroying you, he will desire to do that above anything else. Amen? Amen. So, beloved, let us understand that, that God knows that even now that we are in an evil uh, generation. And an evil generation is simply is a faithless generation. Evil and faithlessness are equated together. They are of the same tree. Faithlessness, one with no faith, and being evil. So that means that even you, who is a Christian, as a believer, can actually be faithless toward the things of God. And then we have a tendency to begin to start seeking a sign. And this is what Jesus was referencing to, that Jonas himself was a sign unto the Ninevites. And uh, the Son of Man would be a sign to... Uh, the people of this generation. Now, one of the reasons that we ought not seek after a sign, because only those who are, as the Word of God says, part of an evil generation seek it after a sign. Look, I remember this as a young man. And I say young man, maybe we was 10, 11, 12 years old. Our mom and dad would leave of the house. Dad was at work and mom had to, uh, she used to drive the, uh, the bus or the station wagon for the, um, uh, what those children, they were uh, kindergarten uh, and would bring them to kindergarten class. And we would be sometimes at home uh, by ourselves. And look, beloved, let me tell you what, you know, uh, we would be doing some crazy things, you know, at the house while mom and dad was gone. But one thing we was wise about, we always had a lookout. Someone that would be looking and uh, see if there was any sign of mom returning. 
so that we could put things back in order and act like everything had been okay and we hadn't been destroying the house while uh, she was gone. So we would put someone at the window and they would be looking to see if there were dust coming down the road. Because if we saw dust, we then would assume that it could possibly be mom returning and we needed to get things back in order, the things that we had, uh, uh, you know, uh, thrown up or, or tore apart or messed up while she was going, gone. And I mean, and I, I realized that once she got there, we, she probably kind of knew that we had done things that we should not have done, but we had got it in so uh, much back in order. You know, furniture was back in place. Uh, uh, you know, furniture that we was jumping on, beds that were messed up, we was jumping on, we had fixed them. I, you know, we knew she really could tell, uh, but, you know, she never really questioned us about that. Well, beloved, God is different than that in a sense that God knows what we were doing, amen, even while we were doing it and seeing us doing it while we were doing it. So we might have been hiding it from mom, but it wasn't hiding it from God, amen. And so we had a lookout because we were doing evil. And that's why Jesus said that an evil generation is always looking out for a sign because they want to prepare themselves only when they know that the Lord is on his way back. They don't care about the time before then. In other words, I want to do exactly what I want to do. I want to get exactly what I want to get out of this thing. I want to have all the so-called fun that I can have. And then when, when I uh, see the Lord returning, then I'm going to change uh, uh, my ways. But beloved, the Bible says that it will be like a twinkling of an eye. It will be so quick. It's going to be a million times faster than what I just did that when the Lord returns. So it won't be no opportunity to fix things up. You know, like I heard one individual say, was telling someone this. They were saying that, you know what? You can live your life just the way you want to. And this was a guy that I thought was a Christian. I thought was intelligent. He would say, you can live your life whatever way you want to. He says, but before you die, you want to get right with the Lord. Before you die, you have to make sure that things are in order. But you can live your life just any way you want to. This is what he was sharing with someone. And beloved, that is not truth. Amen? And only those who are seeking after a sign, looking for a sign, will be concerned about the coming of the Lord in a sudden. And beloved, we don't have to do that. As believers because we are constantly in that uh, mode of awaiting the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ before I'm finished sharing with you today I could be uh, 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 taken away from here just like that beloved whatever way the Lord so desired to be I could be taken away from here. So beloved, I'm not seeking a sign. A sign has already been given. And that is the Lord Jesus Christ coming into this earth, dying for my sins. And telling me I have power now over walking in sin. So beloved, we need to trust the Lord and, and believe in the Lord. And look what the Word of God says in the 31st verse. It says, And the Queen of the South, meaning the Queen of Sheba, shall rise up in the judgment with men of this generation and condemn them. For she came from the utmost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon and the whole a greater than Solomon is here. Beloved, a greater than Solomon has been here. 
and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. In 1 Kings 10, the word says this in the very first verse. And when the queen of Sheba heard of the fame of Solomon concerning the name of the Lord. Now concerning the name of the Lord, she came to prove him with hard questions. And she came to Jerusalem with a very great train with camels that bear spices and very much gold and precious stones. And when she was come to Solomon, she communed with him of all that was in her heart. And Solomon told her all her questions. There was not anything hid from the king which he told her not. Glory be to God. She came because she believed. She believed in what Solomon was doing in the nation of Israel. Amen. And beloved, even as we have been studying in the book of Exodus, <clears throat> how Moses was seeking after a sign or things from the Lord that he could give to the people, that he might lead the people through. And we're really finding out that Moses wanted those signs for himself, that he could believe in himself, so that he could do the word, the work of the living God. And beloved, you know, there are those who <clears throat> try to condemn Moses for doubting God. But beloved, I'm not of that understanding because I believe that God uses people who are frail. God uses people who believe that they can't do it. He don't use the boastful, the boastful, the confident, the one who believe that they can do anything. God is not using them. Even though you see many of them stand before you and begin to proclaim that they are sharing with you the word of the living God and it's coming directly from the Lord. But beloved, they're doing that in their own confidence, in their own courage, in their own strength, in their own willpower. Beloved, God is looking for those who are timid. He's looking for those who are without strength. He's looking for those who are totally dependent upon Him. And without Him, they could not do it. That's the people that He's looking for, beloved. He's looking for people like you. Glory be to God. You who say, I can't do it. It's, it's impossible for me to do it. I know that I'm going to fail at it. That's the people that the Lord is using. That's the people that the Lord is blessing in a very powerful way. He's using those people who think that they are nothing and that they cannot be anything. And they have been told all their lives they can't do anything and they are worthless. <clears throat> And they are less than. This is whom God is equipping in these latter days. Beloved, stop seeking after a sign. The sign living in you. And that is the spirit of the living God. And beloved, that is enough. That's the only bad that you need to be able to walk in the authority in this earth that God has called you uh, to. Beloved, let's go on. And the word of God says, The men of Nineveh shall rise up in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it, and they, for they repented at the preaching of Jonas, and behold, a greater than Jonas is here. No man when he had lighted a candle, put it in a secret place, neither under a bushel, but on, but on a candlestick, that they which come in may see light. 
Glory be to the living God. Beloved, the Lord wants to use you in a very powerful way. Don't seek after signs to determine if God wants you to do something. If God wants you to walk in His authority and His power. Yes, He does because His Spirit liveth on the inside of you. And that is enough. Jesus did not begin his ministry until what? Until the Holy Spirit came upon him after being baptized by John the Baptist. The Holy Spirit. Beloved, that is all we need to equip us for the journey. Beloved, in Christ, we pray that the Lord has blessed you through the many studies that we have done. We pray that the Lord will continue to bless you in a very powerful way. We ask that if you desire for us to pray for you, that you can contact us at Evangelist Joseph A. Brown, Post Office Box 186, Youngsville, Louisiana. And beloved, if the Lord put upon your heart things that you know you need to do, that he has called you to do in reference to this ministry. Don't hesitate. Just do what the Lord tells you to do. What he uh, uh, speaks to your heart, beloved. That's what you need to do. Don't hesitate. The Lord will bless you in a very powerful way. And we ask for your continual prayer because we need your prayer. Because believe me, beloved, the enemy don't desire for the word to go forth. He don't desire for you to hear the word of the living God. He wants to cut off everything that has any references to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ or the preeminence of the Lord in this earth today. He wants to cut it all off. He wants to lift up. I'm talking about Satan. He wants to lift up those who are talking about uh, what you can get and what you can gain and all this other foolishness that is contrary to the word of the living God. Beloved, we just pray that the Lord bless you in a very powerful way. And that address again is Post Office Box 186, Youngsville, Louisiana, 70592. Drop us a line. Uh, let us know that you are listening. Let us know if you have been saved uh, uh, through this ministry because there have been many who have been saved through this ministry. And I thank God for those who uh, send in to us because it encourages us that, look, you are doing God's work in this earth. And we appreciate it because we are all in this together. Beloved, we are, regardless if we think we're not. We are. So, beloved, we pray that the Lord continue to bless you and guide you in Jesus' name.